Well, good morning to those who are have morning and good afternoon to those who are in different time zone and it's afternoon. Um, I am not going to put a picture on so because I don't want you to be distracted by looking at me because I hope you will be looking at your Bible. I hope you will have your notebook with you and you will be taking notes because uh, I am not as gracious as Brother Bookard who will have a slide to give to you guys. I uh, want you to take notes while the Lord will give us a word this afternoon. Um, I really never thought in many, many years that I will be a person who is using Zoom. Um, kind of been using it for work now, every now and then, but not that because the scripture really doesn't give us a, a good um, image of people who use Zoom. Uh, they actually, the scripture called them the Zoomzomite. The Zoomzomite are mentioned in the Bible. And these are actually, I think, there are people who are using Zoom. And if you want to find that verse, it's in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 20. There are Zoomzomite apparently at that time who were using Zoom. So hopefully very soon we don't have to be Zoomzomite anymore. And we will be able to be uh, just uh, brethren who are together around the Lord Jesus. Um, this, after, this morning, going to around lunchtime, um, I will be speaking to you about a young man, about his circumstances, and about his God. With that, I would like ask um, one of my younger brothers, Brother Thomas, to read to us from the book of Judges, chapter 6, from verse 1 to verse 16. So turn your Bible with me to the book of Judges, and we would read the first 16 verses. Thomas, if you are available, please go ahead. Yep. Judges, chapter 6, starting with verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, and they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of, because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the Abizrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the, his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Thank you, Thomas.
let's just ask the Lord for help. Lord Jesus, we are very grateful for what thou hast provided in the first lectures. Our eyes upon thee, that thou would just open the scripture to us this morning. Thou knowest the need of each and every one who is listening. And we are also conscious, Lord Jesus, of our inability, our weaknesses, even to communicate thy word. But we are relying on thy spirit that will take the things of Christ and make them known unto us. Encourage our hearts, sustain us, we pray. Give us a fresh appreciation, Lord Jesus, of thyself through the scripture this morning as we commit ourselves to thee. Amen. As I told you, I'm going to paint before you a picture. The book of Judges is really an interesting book because it's a very dark book. And when things are very dark, there is stars that light, that, that shine in a very bright way. When the sky is very, very dark at night, even the tiniest star will shine very, very bright. And in the book of Judges, we have a very, very dark scene. But we also have many luminary. As the apostle encouraged us, to shine in a dark world. And the more darker, the darker the picture and the scene gets, the more bright our testimony will be. As we have heard the scripture being read to us, you have a very interesting situation in Judges chapter six. You have a group of people who are Nomad. Nomads are those kind of people that kind of comes in out of nowhere, light it on a place and destroy everything. They come unexpectedly, unexpectedly, and they scare everyone and they destroy the economy. It's unexpected. It's very scary. It takes away every hope to people who are living in that place. It destroys the livelihood. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And I'm not talking about those people who are mentioned in the book of Judges only, but sometimes. They are not called the Midianites, they are called viruses. Some of them have crowns, some of them have things hanging from their ears, just like the Midianite. And they come in and they destroy everything. They scared people, so there will be no mingling, no gathering of people together. People have to be isolated in caves or in dens. That's the verses that we read in chapter six. People were hiding away. They could not gather because there is a fear. And if they come out, the economy was destroyed. If you read in verse four, the livelihood was gone. It's a very, very dark picture. Kind of uniquely a little bit in chapter six, a little bit different than every enemy that the people of God have faced. And what is the response? The scare and the fear that is real, that is filling everybody's heart. Because judgment have come upon the people of God. The Lord sent his word to tell them that. And as you realize, I am not going to go verse by verse. This story is very familiar story, but I'm going to take it in a totally different way. And I hope you are really paying attention. And I hope it's speaking to your heart because the beauty about the word of God is this. It's applicable to every day. It's applicable to every day. Man is man. Young men, young ladies are the same. The circumstances are the same. 
and our God is the same. So what happened when circumstances like this takes place? One of the expressions that I have heard in the last three months that I have never heard repeated time and time again, the expression is, I don't know. Or we don't know. Uncertainty is ruling. Nobody knows. And the unfortunate part, or maybe the fortunate part, that the people who are saying, I don't know, are supposed to be the subject matter experts, whether it be in the matter of health issue, whether it be in the matter of the government, whether it be in the matter of the economy, they don't know. So there is one worldview that say circumstances are here. Man is here. And the answer we get, I don't know. And they are, they are honest. I really appreciate the fact that they claim that they don't know. And because they don't know, they don't know what kind of decision to make. So the individual expert said, I don't know. The collective experts, they say, we don't know. That's one worldview. But the missing important element, now I don't want to use the word element, factor is God. Let me show you a different view now, not this worldview, a different worldview. Where someone said in First Timothy chapter 1, and I'm not going to give you a verse, so you could search it in your own time. I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able. So what we have before us here is one who is subject matter expert in God if I could use that term, he have confidence in his God. And with all confidence, he said, I know when Paul wrote that stuff, he wasn't really having the comfort. He was actually isolated. He was in jail, shut in place, shelter in place. And he said, I know whom I have believed, but not only that, it wasn't theoretical knowledge. He said, I am persuaded that he is able. So the object of his faith was a God that he knew. Not only have information about him, but have relationship about with him to be able to say that he is able. And he committed the circumstances to his hand. But that's the individual. I look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, and I see a company. And they are saying, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So if it's a case of the Midianite, nomads, or if it's a case of whatever circumstances we're going through, the circumstances is real, the human element is real, but our God is real. And the important thing for you and I is this. In the dark circumstances, there were many young men at that time in the book of, in the time of Gideon. There was at least 32,000 that were fit for the military service because they came out to fight. And the Lord said, hey, tell them to go home if they are afraid. Christianity is not for cowards. If you have, if you look to the world around you, you will be afraid. If you keep listening to what they're telling you, of course you will be afraid. But Gideon, in those very hard circumstances, a man who is isolated, probably he was so disappointed. Here is a time where he thought maybe he will have a graduation party because he finished high school or maybe he finished college. Maybe he was looking forward to the time where he could be around his friends. Maybe he was looking for the time where he would be around the prophet that came to explain to them the word of God and enjoy a Bible conference. Maybe he was looking to just have this ability to relax. And to enjoy after a hard winter and spring of studying. 
but none of that have taken place. The nomads, the Midianite, lighted on the land and scared everybody and put everybody in caves and in dens and shut them completely off and robbed them from their foods. Probably in the Western world, none of us could complain about rob, being robbed from food because even when things were really, really bad and people were looking for water and all other things, somehow people were able to get what they want. As a matter of fact, I'm sure if every one of you look at their closet, probably there is enough food stored in there to last you. You know, I think the people after we are raptured, the people in the tribulation will be happy because there will be leftover food in our houses you know, still around. We have a lot. But what did Gideon do? This is the circumstances. So I painted to you as a picture of the circumstances. Very similar to your time. Well, Gideon is very disappointed, I am sure. If he was a young man, I would be. All of the things that I was looking for to do is are gone. There is fear everywhere. I can't go out. I can't hang around my friends, but I could stay home in my cave and every one of you have a cave somehow. And maybe I will use my time to enhance my ability in playing whatever game you guys play on your computers. So if before the shutdown, you were at level whatever, two or three, now you're level at 23 or so, you're really getting good at it. Maybe that's what you're spending your time. Yeah, or maybe you're spending your time listening to the Midianites. There's a lot of them telling you all kind of stuff, scaring you. And if the Midianites are not enough, there is the Amalekite. Those are kind of like the Zumzumite too. Kind of big and tall guys. And the sons of the East. Every kind of philosophy, every kind of thinking, you could listen to every kind of expert. You could listen to that. You could improve your basketball ability. Go outside in your backyard and really now you could do well. I'm knocking down any of that stuff at all. But I'm really wondering if the Lord have allowed that because I really believe from the word of God that nothing happened to the believers just by accident or because somehow a virus jumped from the bat to human or whatever escape from whatever they say escape from a lab whatever it is i don't know and it doesn't really matter but i know something that the most high rules in the kingdom of man and i know there is nothing that takes place in that universe that our blessed lord did not know about he knew about it before he created us. And 2020 did not take the Lord by surprise. He said, oh, now what am I going to do? They have a virus. No, it didn't. And if I'm like Paul, I could say, I know whom I believed. The problem is this. We need to trust God and use our head. The problem sometimes that we trust our mind or heads and use God whenever it's convenient. The message to us is this at the present time. What am I doing with the time that's given to me, young man, young lady? Because it's an interesting thing. The Lord sent the prophet and he said to them in verse 10. Don't fear from the Amorites. The Lord is reminding his people of what he have done for them. Have the Lord spoken to you in the last three months of what he have done for you? Have you kind of sat quietly when you are really scared, when you are disappointed and sat quietly before the Lord and turn your phone off and turn your computer off because time is so precious. There is one thing that you will never get back. You could get your health back. Your, as a matter of fact, you could get your degree back. You could get whatever you lost back. There is one thing that you're not going to get back. It's time. May 28 is gone. 2020. May 29, 2020, 2020 is gone. As a matter of fact, May 30, 10 o'clock is gone and it's not coming back. That's why the scripture said, redeem the time. 
So now we have an opportunity like Gideon have. And the question to my heart and to yours is this. You're stuck at home. What are you doing with that which is in your hand? How close are you to the Lord Jesus today? than before March 10 or March 15, when they kind of lock everybody down and shut universities and school. How close are you to the Lord? How much more are you trusting him? How much more do you know him? To say, I know whom I believed and I am persuaded that he's able, no matter what, if they open it up, if they don't open it up, if there is, people around who have a virus or if people know. Now, I'm not saying go around and hug people who have the virus, but don't let fear rule your heart. It said, let the peace of Christ rule your heart. Don't let fear rule your heart because what's gonna happen, they have implanted in our head today that people around us are the enemies. And I hope you are not gonna be scared to go back again to the meeting because your brothers and sisters might give you a virus. Just be very careful. Some of us are more vulnerable than others, but please, please don't let fear rule your heart. Let's trust the Lord like Gideon did. So what did you do when circumstances so bad? When the enemy have robbed us from everything, when the desire to be together is not there, I hope really you appreciate, I hope the Lord spoke to your heart. I remember, and you remember the times where going to the meeting was like, yeah, do I have to go to the meeting again? Can, can, we just, can we just go one time? Or do we have to go back again in the evening? Do I have to go to the prayer meeting? But I have schoolwork. I hope the Lord, because the Lord said, okay, if that's what you want. I remember some of the young people on Sunday night after our meeting, they were looking on their phone to see if their school is closing. They were hoping like, oh, they closed that school in that district and that school, hopefully our district will be closed. Well, I think if they are honest, they tell you they wish they are back at school again. I'm sure they're bored of sitting in front of their computer doing you know, homework or taking lessons that, that way. So the Lord said, okay, you wanna stay home, stay home. But what are you doing? How are you redeeming the time? Let's see what Gideon did. So Gideon said, you know what? The best answer is, Food, the food supply. Food is very, very important. Food is really important. I have to have food. And I am gonna go and thresh wheat in the wine press in very, in un very unusual circumstances. This is not the place. This is not the place where you thresh wheat. Vines are kind of short. And you have to be on your knee, really, to kind of thresh wheat. But it's a good position to be in when you are threshing wheat. If wheat speaks of Christ, he is the grain of wheat. It is good for me to be on my knees and threshing wheat. That's what David did, as Brother Bokar have told us. He was in the field. What is his ambition? He said, I'm not going to go to sleep until I get a high degree. It's a wonderful thing to get a high degree. I'm not going to go to sleep until I be a king. It's good to be a king. But he said, I'm not going to go to sleep until I found a habitation for the ark of the Lord of Israel. His heart was about the Lord and about the Lord's things. But how do you do that if you don't eat? You see, the Midianite wanted to rob you the food from your hand. So they lock you at home. But thank God the word of God is not bound. You, every one of you have a Bible. I am sure you have many Bibles. When is the last time you really sat before the Lord and you just read and read and read on your knees? Because the spiritual growth only gonna happen when you read your Bible and pray every day. That's a formula. I say it all the time, and I'll keep saying it all the time. The formula for Christian growth is very easy. It's two ingredients. Read your Bible, pray every day. And that's what Gideon was doing. I'm speaking in a very simple way, but I hope I'm talking to your heart and to your conscience, because I don't know how long they're going to keep us that way. Before life gets busy, 
let's get in a habit like Gideon, where we go to the wine press to speak about the wine press. And I'm not going to tell you what the wine press speaks about. I hope you're going to get some good commentary and read that. But I want to tell you about a man who wanted to secure the food supply for himself, for his families. Young men, young sisters, what are you doing with your time? When you share things, what do you share? I'm glad I don't have a Facebook, but sometimes when I hear the stuff that's put in there, I shudder. What are we saying? What are we talking about? What is our Christianity? Getting involved in the politics of this world? Wanted to have a place in this world? Not, that's not Gideon. Gideon wanted to be just having food for himself. But that's how God is going to use people in the public arena. Not before their time. Not to run ahead of themselves. Here is a man who sat there and said, I am going to secure food. Secure food in the time of distress. In the dark time. And he was threshing threshing um, floor in the air, uh, wheat in there. It's very interesting. In the very same time that this story have taken place, the book after the book of Judges is the book of Ruth. And there was a young lady, because I wanted to make sure the young ladies who are on the phone, who are listening, also realize, well, this is Gideon's responsibility, not the young ladies. You know what Ruth was doing in the field of Boaz? She was picking up wheat also. The word of God. The food. When the apostle Paul was leaving, he said, listen, I commit you to the Lord and the word of his grace. Young people, unless you are well versed in the word of God, there is no future. Because it is not by Googling information, you're going to get information. It is by spending time in the word of God that you will be able to be used of God. There is no other way. There is no other way. But before you Read the word so you could speak or you could teach a Sunday school class. And I hope you do that before you teach a Sunday school class. Or even if you are speaking, it would be a very sad thing. That's the only time you read is before you're going to speak. That's the only time. So could you could prepare a sermon. You know, I took, um, I don't know, there is, there is certain subject in school that I didn't like. I studied very hard for it. I took the exam. And after that, trust me, I didn't know anything about it. And I believe sometimes, because the word of God is two-edged sword, before I speak it, I need to ask myself, am I practicing what I preach? Because I tell you this, every time we open our, our mouth, the Lord is going to test us on what we have said. And you're all going to experience that. Because the Lord is looking for reality. And I like Gideon because he was real. He was very real. He was not a show off. The Lord appeared to him in verse 12. And he said, the Lord be with you, mighty man of valor. Very interesting that the Lord is taking notice of young men. Just like Boaz took notice of Ruth. You see, the Lord is really looking. And he is taking notice. You see, you don't have to show up in front of your brother and sister so to say, oh, he is good. It's the living God that Elijah could say, before whom I stand. Because reality is very, very important in divine things. You need to be real. People said, well, uh, Gideon was humble. I don't know if he was humble. He was real. He stated the facts when he was asked, you know, the Lord be with you. What did he say? He said, if the Lord be with us. He didn't say, well, you know, you see, all of these young people in Israel, you know, they're just sitting in caves. They're having fun there. I am really, look at what I'm doing. Look at what I'm doing. I am really working hard and I'm trying to do that. They're really bad. No, 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 no. Not only he was on his knees gleaning food for himself. He counted on the promises of God and he said, if the Lord is with us, with us, with us, he's reminding the Lord saying, Lord, we are thy people. We are your people here. I am just part of this whole thing. It's not them, you know, if they just do this, you know, our meetings will be great. If these older brethren just do that. No, not at all. Being fed by the word of God. If you are, if you eat right, you will think right. You will act right. Application comes from knowing the doctrine. 
Doing the will of God will come from knowing the doctrine. The scripture is wonderful. It's a treasure. Please read it. Read it with your eyes open. And ask the Lord. Ask the Lord, show me wonderful things. I'm sure many of you could witness to the fact in reading a portion from the scripture and saying to yourself, I have never noticed that before. I have never noticed that before. As a matter of fact, when Thomas was reading that word, when the Lord it said in verse 14, it said the Lord looked upon him. I find that very fascinating. Actually, it just hit me when he was reading. The look of the Lord. You know also who's the Lord turned and looked at? The Lord looked upon him. It was Peter. Remember the trials when the Lord Jesus was standing before Pilate? Before he was stood before Pilate, he was before the high priest. And Peter was there. And Peter was behind the back of the Lord. And the Lord turned, the scripture said, and looked upon Peter. Peter thought he was doing something behind the Lord's back. None of us will be able to do anything behind the Lord's back. And don't think the Lord's not watching you. So the Lord takes notice of young people. He takes notice of every one of us. He takes notice of old people also. So what does he do? The Lord looked upon him and he said, go with this your might and you will save Israel. What did Gideon say? He have the right assessment of himself. The right assessment. What is the right assessment that he have? He stated the fact. He said, look, I am, I am the least, the youngest. My household is not famous. Usually when people speak, nobody kind of like, you know, they always speak about their genealogies, their grandfather, their last name, their heritage, everybody proud of the, of the things. And even if they don't have really that good genealogy or good background or good grandparents or good great grandparents, or good parents, they make stuff up because they just want to show that like they're important people. But that's not Gideon. Gideon said, look, Lord, thou God seest me. I'm going to tell you what it is. That's what I am, Lord. I'm, I, I can't, I, I'm like, go and save. I mean, I know of somebody like Othniel, the Lion of God. Yeah, that could go and save. Even Barak could go and save. Maybe even Ehud could go and save. But me, I know, buddy. Like, I'm like from the tribe of Manasseh. And even from that tribe, my family is not really a big deal. And I'm even the youngest, the least. The Lord is looking upon young men and young women, just like Boaz looked upon Ruth. And just like the Lord looked upon, upon Gideon. The Lord is taking notice of your spiritual progress. The Lord is taking notice because if you want to be used of the Lord, listen, if you are saved, you're saved. But it would be really pathetic that you're saved and you go to heaven and never have made any spiritual progress it's a very cheap thing actually but the lord is looking for young men and for young ladies for himself you see the lord doesn't impose himself on anybody many young men in at that time in israel the lord doesn't impose he said you go and do this no the lord is attracting our hearts to himself did you know that about the greatness of the lord where is he? Where is his wonderful things that our fathers have told us? I hope you listen to your older brothers when they speak to you from the word of God. I hope your library, I saw Bookard standing behind his bookshelf, and I know this is one of the many bookshelves that he has. I hope you have good commentaries that you read. Our spiritual fathers that have told us the word of God. I hope you get these books and read them. You could even go online and don't Google stuff because that's just not the right thing. I mean, this is just sad. But there are many good brethren books. STEM Publisher is one of them. Where you could go on that website and find books. Read Mr. Hamilton's mess. 
Read Mr. F.B. Hall. Just two examples, Mr. McIntosh. These are men who, and it's so, listen, if I could read English, any of you could, could do. So please don't use the excuse, it's big word, it's hard word, it is not. It is not. But you need to feed your soul. So, he said, he confessed the fact. But the Lord said to him, listen, I'm going to go with you. I am going to be with you. Food. He fed himself from the word of God. He get to know the God who is in complete control. The presence of the Lord. I am with you. I am going to be with you. The Lord be with you, mighty man of valor. You see, some of us wanted people to call us that. Some of us wanted to act up so people say, yeah, look at him. He is. Gideon want to hear it from the voice of the Lord. And I hope all of us, when we do something for the Lord, we're not looking for the praise of man, but we are looking for the praise from himself. The story is well known. The man who loved food, it was really good that uh, actually in the following chapter, when he was going to fight against the, uh, the, um, the, the Midianite, I like what I like about Gideon. Again, not only the reality of he knows his own self, he also kind of have a fear. And he had a conversation with the Lord. Lord, okay, I'm going to go, but I really need you to show me something. Yeah. Yeah. He talked with the Lord. And you know what? What I love about the Lord, he is so gracious. He put up with him. You would say to yourself, okay, enough. I told you. I talked to you. I appeared to you. I touched the, uh, the things that you offer. You put you know, you offer your goat. That's the only thing that you have. Because the ox in verse 25, it was his father. So what did he have? He had a goat. He didn't have an ox. He offered it. What do you have? You have a goat. Your iPhone. Your computer. That's your goat. Whatever you have. Offer it up for the Lord. Use it for the Lord. And Gideon, I showed you. I touched the thing and, and I went in the flame of fire. And you said, this is God. He still has a communion with God. He would have a conversation with God. Have you ever have a conversation? Show me this, but show me that. Have a conversation with God. Have a relationship with God. But it's interesting that when the, one of the Midianite um, uh, soldier heard about uh, in chapter 7, I think around verse 13 or so, he had a dream about, about the, the battle and he said he saw a barley loaf. A barley loaf come down and kind of knock our tent down. And... Uh, the soldier said, oh, he was a good uh, dream interpreter. He said, oh, this is uh, none but, uh, but the sword of Gideon. A barley loaf, food, is a sword. I told you about the word of God is food. Well, the word of God is also a sword. The barley loaf is a sword of Gideon. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. So if the enemy comes upon us, if we are fed very well with Christ in his death, Barley speaks about his Christ in his resurrection. And that is a victory that you and I, we have. He is risen. What is the worst thing that could happen to any man? Death. The Lord Jesus conquered death. And if you are with him, you are also victorious. The last thing I want to finish up with in the next two minutes, I actually wanted to choose Gideon because in Hebrews chapter 11, it kind of said there, and I like that verse, um, it said, time would fail me to speak about Gideon. So I kind of feel a little bit better here that I could go on for the next two hours, but time would fail me. And the first mention there is Gideon. So time would fail me if I tell you about Gideon. But I, I want to end up with this. I talked to you about the circumstances. Very dark, very bleak. Very distressing, very scary. I talked to you about a young man who know his size, his own size, who is real, who redeemed the time, who he knew, whom he had believed, and he was persuaded. But I told you about the God who took notice of such a young man. And when Gideon, in verse 23, the Lord told him, peace be unto you, fear not. He built an altar and he called it, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. And the word peace here just not mean, the word Shalom really doesn't mean just like peace, that there is no war. 
It's a greeting word. When you see somebody and you say peace or shalom, you're actually saying safety, well-being, comfort, encouragement. All of that is part of that word. All of it together. And what he is saying, not the peace is not the object, but the God of peace. It is the God of peace. And I think that reminds me of the verse in the book of Hebrews in chapter, I think in chapter 13, where the apostle there say of the God of peace who have, uh, verse 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, the barley loaf, the resurrection, our Lord Jesus. And if you stop there, that would be fine. But he added another thing, which is I'm very happy about the great shepherd of the sheep. What a wonderful thing to know not only Jesus as Lord, but to know him as the great shepherd of the sheep. You know, there is no greater shepherd than him. There is no, now this is my poor English, gooder, better shepherd than him. There is no chiefest shepherd than him. The God of peace. That is what Gideon have taken hold of in the time of scariness. He took hold of the God of peace. Not only he took a hold of, why? How did he know about him? Why did he call him this name? In the midst of the fear and the circumstances, because he was eating very, very well. He fed himself. He know what it is to pray. He know what it is to have communion with God. And he ended up speaking about the God of peace. He said to him, he said, I told you in verse, in verse 10, fear not. He said, I told you, fear not. I told you, fear not. If you want to be afraid, that's your problem. But the Lord said, I told you, fear not. And I always said it. I could tell you till next morning, fear not. I could show you every verse in the scripture that said, fear not. I could show you verses that said, cheer up. It might not do you any good. But you know what? If you personally hear it from the Lord, now you're not going to hear voices, but I'm sure you all experience when you are sitting opening the word of God, and in it, the Lord speak to your heart, encourage you and comfort you. The God of peace, the God of peace. What did he do? He raised, he brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our God and our Father, we bless thy name for the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus. Though we are small and weak, but he's mighty to save, to support and to supply, and to give help in the time of need. We desire, Lord Jesus, that thou will be real in our hearts. We pray, blessed God, that thou will make him precious in our heart and our mind, that each and every one of them afresh have a greater appreciation of him, have confidence in him, know whom we have believed. Give us grace, our God and our Father, to trust the Lord Jesus and to love him. Give us grace to love thy word. Give us grace to spend time in thy presence, to feed our soul, to eat the wheat and the barley, to strengthen ourselves in our most, built up, built ourselves in our most holy faith. That when time comes, we will be willing to do thy will, will pleasing to thee in everything we pray. Oh, may thy word will have impact on our heart today as we will continue to wait upon thee. We thank thee again for thy word and we just commit ourselves to thee for the rest of this day. Lord Jesus, amen.